Uh, hi, my name's Stefan. I'm uh, 23 years old. I have a vision impairment, um, and I'm the opening batsman for the Australian blind cricket team. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's just get it off out of the top. If anybody is listening to this, you'll be like, low vision, blind, slash cricket. Yeah. That just does not work, right? I obviously know it does because I've seen it. But the first time that I did, Stefan, I was like, that is one of the sickest, coolest mm. of the sports for people with disability because of how you know different and hard it is. Can you just straight up explain how it works? Because I'm sure people are like, what? Cricket, blind? What are you talking about? Yeah, it's quite crazy. Um, so usually blind, so, so cricket, like obviously blind cricket is very similar to the conventional game. So you have obviously 11 players per team. Um, and obviously you have the normal dismissals. So you have, if you get bowled, you know, caught, run out, everything, stumped, all that stuff as well. Um, the real big distinction is the um, the classifications of sight you have on the on the on the field. So, in an eleven person team, you usually have uh, four B three players. Um, so B three means up to ten percent vision. Um, you usually have three B twos, and that's up to about five percent vision. And you have four B ones, and B ones are totally blind players. So obviously, it's a very big distinction between you know different sight c- categories and where these players go. Um, and um, blind players are really important to the game because they, uh, you know, out of the 20 overs, for example, if you have a 20-over game, they have to bowl at least eight overs. Um, you know, that's that's that's, sta- that's stated. You can't, you know, change that or anything more of a game. You have to, they have to bowl eight overs, which, you know, obviously makes them really important. I like it that um, you said the biggest distinction is the classification of players, but I would think it is that you can't see the ball. So how does that work? Like, are they bowling it? Like, how does it, I mean, without vision, it'd be pretty hard to bowl slash hit slash catch. Oh, exactly, yeah. So, obviously, um, the next big distinction, obviously, and I was uh, going to go through that. Oh, sorry, I got to hear myself. No, no, no. Do you want to leave? Do you want me to leave? I can go if you want. I'm easy. You're not needed, Dill. Yeah. No, that's my fault. I should be uh, be quicker. So, um, you know, so it's the the ball is actually bought underarm, and it's actually um, a white ball. It's actually got plastic in it, ball bearings in it. So, obviously, the ball makes noise for for all players to to distinguish, You obviously, you know, so there's fully, fully blind players, they can hear the ball. Um, for partially sighted players, um, they rely less on their less on their hearing. But um, obviously, when you um, when the bowler is about to bowl the ball, they ask the batsman if they're ready. And as they d- release the ball, they say play. So the the batsman at least has an indication of when the ball is coming down. So it's not mm-hmm. like you know, in typical in normal cricket where you know you um, the ball just comes in and the batsman has to see them to actually know they're coming. You know they're coming down the pitch to bowl. Yep. So. Um, so you at least have some warning there as well. And um, um, B1s actually get double runs as well. They have a runner. So if it's oh. one run, it's two. If it's, oh. it's, it's four, it's eight. So, you know, I think that's a B1 what teeing off. Mm. Now, what what classification are you in? So I'm a B3. B3, okay. So, so that is, I was going to say, you're the highest partial vision. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, can you please just, I mean, I, I don't know if you want me to t- give out the uh, the wiki bio on you. Um, yeah, well, Stephen, I, mean, I, I do. But so. uh, would you like to tell everyone the world record that you hold? Uh, so the, the world record, I actually hold the Australian record as well, I believe. Um, but also the, the world record in um, the highest individual score in the ODI um, blind cricket game. So the original record. Yeah, one day, day international. Yeah, so that's 40 overs. So um, in, you know, obviously mainstream cricket, you know, it, it's 50 overs, but in blind cricket, it's 40 overs. Um for distinction, I, I think because uh, obviously we bowl more uh, B1 overs in, in blind cricket, so obviously it can take a bit longer. So, um, but um, you know, the, the original record was held um, by a Pakistani blind cricketer in 1998, and we made 262 against South Africa. Well, you made Cup. more than that. Wait for this. You made more than that. Wait for this. Yeah, so I made about 309 off 140 <laughs> balls. So that's outrageous. Um, had, a, had a good day. <laughs> also, good day. also no double points. I mean, not not the, uh, to dilute the fact that B one players get double points, double but runs, double, double runs. runs. Um, that's just straight off the bat. Yeah, exactly. Averaging yeah. averaging three per hit. Um, another dumb question, maybe, but this is what we're about. Can you hit sixes or not really? Because it's rolls. Or do you have? Can you hit like a golf wedge and get it up off the ground? Oh, it gets up. Yeah. So um, I actually hit. One of the interesting innings, I actually hit a six. Um, wow. It was a reverse sweep over a, a reverse sweep. So obviously, the you know the reverse hit. Um, and I just, uh, it's actually very hard. It's actually very rare. But I, obviously, when especially like the good bowlers, they actually can bounce the ball and it's obviously bouncing towards you. Mm. Um, luckily, I managed to get underneath this one and it just kind of you know strong enough to hit it over the rope. Um, 
yeah, just absolutely sent it. I was that over. I was like, okay, I'm gonna send this guy. I'm just gonna absolutely just send him over the rope. And thankfully, I did. If I missed it, then um, that would be an interesting uh, event. But <laughs> luckily, I did miss it. <laughs> Three hundred and nine, just an incredible what, Guinness World Record holder as well. Just absolute superstar. What, what percentage of vision do you have then? Like, where where do you sit? I have about ten percent vision. So um, you... obviously, yeah, on, on the cusp a little bit. Could you play mainstream cricket? Uh, so I used to when I was younger. I don't like the um, word mainstream cricket. Yeah. It's, yours is mainstream too. You said it before. I was like, I don't like that. Like able-bodied cricket. Let's just call that. Is that right? Yeah, no, that's, yeah that's fair yeah, enough. The, 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 the crap cricket, you know? <laughs> the crap Sorry, cricket. David Warner. I know you're a big <laughs> fan of the podcast, but we've got a new Warner in the house. So could you play cricket or is it just too quick with the ball? Uh, I used to, but then my sight started to decline as I got older and older. Um, and you know, I used to play at the park, you know, with my with my dad as as most you know obviously young men, you know, young boys at their age. And um, but unfortunately, after a while, it's got too quick for me. And um, that's when I kind of turned away from cricket and then turned more to blind cricket. Um, yeah. and I do agree that 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 term mainstream obviously was more just um, you know, that's how we use it in our sport. But obviously, for for you know, it should be it's you know, it's all mainstream. It's just, it's just cricket, brother. Mm. It's exactly, cricket. yeah. Exactly. Just do it differently. We do have you on because you do have the Australian cricket, um, I mean, for multiple reasons. Of course, you've told great stories so far, but also the cricket is a huge focus. And, you know, um, watching some of your sport over the past few days and learning a bit about your story before our chat, I do have a couple of questions just from uh, myself watching some of the highlights of Blind Cricket Australia. Um, First one is, as I was spectating, I wondered, how do you spectate cricket? Do you go to the Boxing Day test at the MCG? Is, do you get anything out of that? Like I've seen, um, you know, your friend who's blind who came and watched you play tennis. Ben Pettengill and Steph Agnew. Steph Agnew. Both of them. Um, yeah, yeah, both of them came and watched and kind of took in the sounds. But they're so, we're closer to the court. You can hear the, the ball being hit. What do you, how do you spectate cricket? So uh, if if it was a preference, I would usually watch it on TV, obviously, because it's right because I can it's right in front of me. I can obviously play it back as well, and then watch things that I might have missed and zoom in as well. But there's nothing like there's obviously the experience is going to a, a, a test match, you know, a cricket game, you know, in as you know anywhere really is obviously the the, the prime time experience, you know. So mm. for me, usually I obviously usually pay a bit extra to um, obviously they have little radios which you can put in your ear, which obviously wow. describes the game as well. And I usually have binoculars as well, um, obviously, so I can see, um, you know, try and see a bit more what's going on. Um, and usually I go with a sighted guide, you know, which, you know, who knows cricket as well. So I do my, what happened there? He's like, oh, this happened here. And I go, okay, it's, you know, it's cool or I know or something as well. Um, you know, it can be, you know, it can be, you know, a bit of a bit of a process to, to get everything ready on a, if I'm going out to a cricket game. But, you know, you, you do you do what you do for the things you love as well. So, like I said, there's no... No such. There's always a, a fantastic experience of you know a crowd roaring when we get a wicket or something on game day as well. So it's not the can same ask, thing on TV. Can I ask a cricket related question, Angus? Please. Or you're on a I've, got, I've got multiple crickets. How much love do you get from the Australian cricketers? Everybody, be honest. Uh, in terms of like like support, love, connection. Well, we had care. Jude Anthony on recently. He's a wheelchair AFL player, and he said they're tightly. You know, the Richmond players will come and watch no, the play. It's not. It's not. A, it wouldn't be the cricketers' fault. It'd be cricket Australia. But is there much integration between um, everyone? Uh, there, there is integration. Yeah. So I think Nathan Lyon, who's um, Nathan Lyon, who's a really big supporter of um, obviously disability cricket. You know, so he's been involved in. Nice, um, Gary. No, yeah, nice, scary. nice, scary, exactly. Yeah, so and every, and, it, and you wouldn't believe the amount of people that tell him that when we get there. Obviously, yeah, all the players that just get scream out, "Nice, scary." So, um, you know, there is a, there is, it's getting much. Obviously, over the years, it's gotten much better as well. Um, you know, with Nathan Lyon now, with the National Cricket Inclusion Championships as well. Obviously, there's more players getting involved. Um, we actually met the Australian women's team, you know, awesome. um, while we were there, which in, in it was a really good experience because I think for us, we could tell that they were actually really interested in the actual sport as well. Obviously, it wasn't there. They weren't there to, you know, oh, they kind of had to, because it was a scared, something they were told to do kind of thing as well. Obviously, they were told to do it, but also that you could tell they really enjoyed it. And um, they came up to us and I, could, I actually had Meg Lanning come up to me and speak to me and I turned around, Meg Lanning was standing there. I'm just like, she's a real, you know, idol of mine. I'm just going, I just kind of went, uh, got very, very nervous. I didn't know what to say. So, um, you know, it's definitely gotten much better over time. That's like when I roll in the room and see Angus. Yeah, yeah exactly. Angus gets so tight. He takes, he takes the air out of the room um, sometimes because I take such a huge gasp in. Um, there is not many better people in Australian sport than the cricketers, to be honest. Mm. I'm serious. Like, they're really, they're great blokes. They're, they're women's team. They're all legends. Meg's a legend. Um, 
And I reckon as more exposure gets put forward via the governing body, Cricket Australia, of blind cricket, the more they'll get involved as well. I reckon it's going to be the way they integrate is is impressive. So I think it'll be a, 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 obviously ways to go, but I think you're in you're in good hands for sure. Um, Stefan, I watched some footage of New South Wales versus Victoria yesterday on the Tube and uh, YouTube, not in England. Uh, two things I noticed that would differ to able body cricket <laughs> is running down the pitch while um, scoring runs and trying to avoid your fellow batsmen. I've seen a, like I watched five minutes of highlights and I saw n- two near collisions. How do you avoid each other? Are there, you know, the ball bearings in your shoes? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trial and error, I would say. Um, like it's happened a few times actually. So in the actual game, but I was playing obviously the 309. Um, one of our players actually ran into one of their players. So I think it was Matt Cameron. He actually ran into oh, one of their the like the, 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 one of the opposition players, and he had to come Schiffer. off. Um, and there was actually a few times myself where I was running out there with uh, Ned, who's a very tall man, very strong man. Um, and I, I was running down the pitch. We're obviously both running towards each other. And I say, saw this yellow shirt, the Australian shirt, slowly just fast getting closer and closer towards me. And I said, I'm going to become second best out of this collision. Um, I need to dodge it. So I, I had to dodge him. Um, and I lost my bat in the process and had to run down and obviously get in the crease and then go back and get it. Um, but it does happen. Um, it depends on uh, usually the site. So for people with with tunnel vision, you know, um, it's harder for them to see us as well. So, um, with their, obviously with it's tunnel vision, like yeah, they have no, with their, when I mean tunnel vision, they see obviously very, like I said, like a very strong central vision, but they have no peripheral vision. So yeah. that's sometimes where they, you know, players like that struggle. Um, but yeah, it does, it does definitely happen as well. Just a really small thing. How cool are that words from the disability world? actually used in everyday vernacular as well like television mm. that's what it means and everyone's like oh wow I didn't think about that mm-hmm. but in t- you use it in the everyday life like you just care about one thing you got television yeah. there you go um, my second question after watching that highlight was sometimes in the heat of a play where you know um, you know there's multiple runs to be had that's not a four um, how do you there, uh, there can be sometimes a lack of communication and two people end up at the same end how do does that happen often? Um, run, how, run outs. What, yeah, well, well, no, not that. Luckily, they were able to recover because the oh, yeah. ball was so far down the field. Um, and you can tell I'm, by my lack of terminology, I'm not that great with cricket. Yeah, you really get it wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, I caught a points, not uh, runs. Throw the pitch the with the points on yeah. the. Uh, points, yeah. on you the... know what? But yeah, there was a point where two Victorian players were at the same crease, and he's like, "Oh, you know." Just then, as he got close to him, saw that he was. They went for another run. Does sometimes that lack of communication happen at the crease? Uh, so it's very, very rare for that to happen where you have two players at the same end. Uh, that's that's mm-hmm. very rare. And it's very rare. And actually, I'd say, obviously, uh, able-bodied cricket as well. Um, run out stone and blind cricket are, are probably the main way, uh, main form of dismissal because yeah. um, obviously, especially when light and, obviously light and glare comes into as well, sometimes you can't see if they have the ball in their hands or if the ball, they're still looking for the ball or um, as well, and sometimes you know um, you can't actually see how you know how fast the ball is coming in. So um, that's something for you know for us, you know, Australian blind cricket team, we've really struggled with. And you know, as I said, there's been various collapses where we've just lost runouts because of wickets because of runouts. So do, um, yeah, do two B three batsmen ever bat at the same time? B three meaning fully blind or not? Do they always have to be batting with a B one who can see the ball to call runs? Um, no, so like it, it works in cycles. So like you have so so you have cycles of, of three. So you have usually in each cycle you have to have at least one per category. Okay, um, makes so sense. B three, B two, and B one. And um, you sound like banana in pajamas then, by the way. B one and B two. Yeah. Um, secondly, surely there is no catches. Does anyone ever get out caught? Uh, no, that can happen. Yeah, oh, definitely can happen. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Probably, I think one of the best catches I've seen was actually won them the final New South Wales in their first year, their first um, NCICs win, which is a National Cricket Inclusion Championships. Um, he actually caught the ball on the, like someone actually just sent the ball. Um, they needed about four runs to win, I believe, and it would have gone for six and they would have won the game. But the player caught the ball on the boundary rope, and oh. um, and um, and that was Oscar Stubbs. Hero. I, as I said at the start, I didn't think they had enough this is runs. In the air, might be caught. It is caught. It is caught. It's all over. Pritchard was the key. He's been caught down on the boundary and fallen. I heard a rumour. It's not not solid, solid 100%, but each Olympics and Paralympics, mainly the Olympics, but sometimes the Paralympics, but definitely the Olympics, 
the host nation gets to pick a sport, right? Or they get to pick numerous sports. So 2032 Brisbane, mm. there's rumour that cricket's going to be in there. Everybody cricket. India, England, they're really pushing for it. Any chance of blind cricket at the Paralympics, do you reckon? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> That'll be an absolute amazing experience to be involved in that, that Paralympic setup. I think, um, you know, it's such a a massive uh, event on the calendar for obviously, you know, all, all people, you know, our entire country as well, you know, obviously throughout, throughout the world as well, you know, the Olympics and the Paralympics as well, particularly the Paralympics, because you can see, and I like to use this term, like the disability, like the ability and disability as well, you know, pe- obviously people with disabilities, you know, competing and, and doing what they love. So for us, yeah. that'd be an amazing experience, especially playing in Australia as well. Like, you know, there's no better thing of playing in Australia, um, how, like, you know. How many teams play nationally, uh, internationally? Uh, at the moment, there's, I believe, so usually you have, you have Australia, New Zealand, um, you have Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, uh, Bangladesh, Maybe England, West thing. Indies, yeah. South got Africa. Enough. Yeah, oh, yeah, you have enough. Oh, yeah, you got yeah. enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, you might have a chance there. Yeah, um, I hope so. Just to give people, um, I'll play a sound effect, I guess, over the top of this um, of what the ball sounds like, but how do you describe... Um, the white cricket ball and the ball bearings inside the sound. How, what, what's it closest to? Oh, how would I describe it? Um, I would say it, it's it's. I've heard a few. I've, I've, what I would describe it as is um, rice. So you put rice in the container, you just shake it. That's what I would describe it yeah. as for some a reason. Maraca. Isn't it more yeah, like, like a, a maraca, tambourine? Yeah. Is it a bit tambourineish? Yeah, I'd say it's pretty tambourineish as well. Yeah, like it's. I think it's a combination of it all. Um, so I've heard it's not people... like a cat bell. No. no, I don't think it's. I don't want to call it a cat bell. I, I don't think. As a, someone who doesn't play, but I would describe that and the goal ball as more of like a tambourine, like you know the little clappers. There's yeah, lots yeah, of them yeah. inside. Things, yeah. So when yeah. they go together, I, I feel it's a bit tambourineish. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. And then guess what? You're gonna play it like, oh, that sounds nothing like a okay. tambourine. Okay, here is the sound effect, <laughs> and it sounds. Nothing. There you go. It okay, sounds nothing like it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, we will of course talk more about cricket, but with our podcast, we do like to talk about, um, of course, disability and and yours being. Uh, uh, you you weren't born with no vision. Um, you said it was like degenerative. Can you tell us uh, the condition that you have to uh, have low vision? So my condition is gen- congenital nystagmus. So obviously it's the involuntary movement of the eye. So I don't know if it's happening right now. So yeah, I'll, just because this is obviously an audio medium, do you mind if I talk about that? Yeah, because yeah, your yeah. Eye, I can see your eyes blinking and moving side to side and up and down. Yeah, is that that's so that that just. Obviously, you can't control that. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. So, and it gets worse and worse as I get stressed. So, obviously, sometimes when I'm very, very stressed or very tired, like uh, there's people are saying that my eyes are like rolling in my head kind of thing, but obviously, okay. I can't control it. Um, I'd and, like to apologize uh, yeah. about Angus. He makes everyone stressed. So, no, don't worry about <laughs> and it. And I'd like to apologize for Dylan because he just rolls his eyes at everything I say. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's two of us rolling our eyes right now, mm-hmm. mate. Don't worry about that. And I can't oh, see either of it. Yeah. <laughs> That's good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so because your eyes roll around in your eye socket, um, sorry for the you know, layman's turns of it is because that happens so much throughout the day, you just don't feel it anymore because it's just part of every day. It's like us breathing. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like you, yeah. You, after a while you just get used to it. Um, you can tell, obviously, like I said, you, I can tell sometimes that I'm very, very stressed cause I can just tell you just have that little, like, a. Uh, I don't know, there's just like, oh, I know that's happening, but there's not really much I can do about it. Um, You know, sometimes you just try and close your eyes and just just give your eyes a bit of a break for about a minute or so. But most of the time, yeah, there's not much you can do about it. So you just have to to roll with it, really. What about when it's the onset of when it started? So were you like just starting to feel your eyes twitch and stuff and the vision going away? Or how did, how did, was the, I guess the first time that you noticed there was a bit of a problem? Uh, yes, yeah, so I was actually, it's actually an interesting story. When I was younger, my, my, my mum told me that, um, I was actually nearly fully blind, apparently this, and this is, this is her story. This is what she told me. Um, and apparently I hit my head on something and you know, I hit my head. I don't know what I hit my head on. And apparently my vision actually got better. Um, I don't know what the, like the validity of that story is. Um, but You're obviously. You're calling your mum a liar? Hey, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm with you. Is that real? Is that uh, real? I, I, that I don't sounds know. made up. That I think, sounds made up. Yeah, it does. I think, well, I think the interpretation of what blindness and vision, like, you know, like when someone says they're totally blind, like, you know, they're supposed to being totally blind, sometimes it's not actually the case, obviously, mm. because, you know, we rely on our vision so much. I think um, that's what I think happens, you know. Um, you know, I, but that's the story I tell because everyone goes, what on earth are you talking about? And I'm just like, well, that's what they told me. So, yeah, fair enough. Um, yeah. 
But um, yeah, I think I think uh, it, I've just noticed in my entire life, and like I said, over time I just noticed it getting worse and worse. And obviously that's when I noticed I couldn't play cricket anymore. Um, and you know I was playing, I was doing karate as well, and I was noticing that I just couldn't pick up the the punches flying at my, you know, the, like the kicks or anything as well. So um, for me, I kind of just went, okay, you know, this is not really for me anymore. That's completely fine as well. You know, I've tried my best at it as well, and I always believe in trying 100, you know, 100 percent whatever you do as well. Um, you know, but sometimes as well, there's, you know, okay, maybe I have to look at alternate options here as well. So that's when I found blind cricket as well. How old were you when this started happening with your eyes? Ah, oh, when I was uh, probably about, for I can remember, probably about, you know, three, you know, when I was about four or five, I think I could start to tell it's just starting to get worse and worse. Um, and I just declined over time until I can really notice it. Like I said, um, it didn't happen at, at you know one day. It just you know like you know unfortunately for some people they have to deal with that. We deal with that. You know some you know one day their their sight merely you know is massively declined in the in a space of a short period of time. But yeah, we, we had a guy on a podcast, Ben Pettengill. We did. Uh, I think it was our first or no, our first episode, mate. Yes, yeah, top five. S- second episode. Yeah, third. Third. Yeah. No, no, second. Second. Good call, dude. mate. I love this podcast. Um, yeah, where he woke up one day, um, Stefan, and he was had vision. Next day, he was blind. Mm, His yeah. optic nerve just, just, just uh, kind of disintegrated away. What? When you were like, all right, I'm in trouble here, which would, would have been what twelve or thirteen or whatever it was. How'd you feel? Like honestly, how did you feel when you started losing the ability to play? You know, everybody cricket, karate, but also like you know, was classified as as someone who was low vision. Um, it's a bit of a it's. It's a bit of a shock to me, you know what I mean? I kind of like, you, you kind of life, you really evaluate your life as well because, you know, um, my, me, myself, I kind of, um, I c- classify myself on what I'm doing in my life as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm just a normal person, you know, I'm just, well, I would say, I used the word normal at the time, that's what I thought, you know, I'm just a person who's fully excited, I'm just, you know, playing normal sports as well, or, you know, or the able bodied sports. Um, but for me, you know, that's when I had to really just go, okay, you know, this is happening. You know, you kind of have to accept it. You know, um, mm. my parents are also really supportive, but they said, you know, don't feel don't feel sorry for yourself or anything as well. You know, you know, take that time to accept it, but also really look at other opportunities out there. You know, so that's when I turned to to blind cricket as well, and 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 even goalball as well, which is a Paralympic sport as well. Um, and you meet people that really understand what you're going through and can help you as well. Um, I- it's really important. You love this story, Stefan. Goalball is like, it's a Paralympic sport where there's three people on a basketball court and the net goes right across the um, end line, right? And you've got to roll a ball like soccer. I watched it. Yeah, I, I then, watched it this year. And then you've got to bend over it. and there's like three goalies, right? It was probably the number one sport. I used to do these Paralympic school talks mm. where we um, would go to a school and um, I would do it with my mate. I worked at the Paralympic committee, shout out to Jake, and one day he was doing a demo and this little like 14-year-old girl went to dive and the ball's quite heavy and it just hit her straight in the face and broke her nose. Because it, it is serious it's goal It's serious ball. how fast it is. Like, and- how fast can you throw the ball, do you reckon, Stefan? Oh, mate, oh, I, I don't know, but um, you know, obviously when you, yeah, I've, I've, I've copped a few in the face in my time. It hurts, goal, man, doesn't it? Mm, mm, it I does. certainly want to, it's the goalie that I really feel for. Well, there's three goals, everyone's a goalie. Yeah, yeah. but because the, some of them were wearing the glasses as well, To right? make everyone blind. To blind. make everyone on the same oh. even field, whether they were, you know, had different classifications, everyone wore the, the yeah. same glasses. And I was watching this like, the jump, like, because obviously they hear the ball, to watch them jump across on a hardwood floor, yeah. put their body on the line was... Uh, I think Incredible. also, I saw at the Paralympics this year, I think there was like an Eastern European team who won and one of the guys got hit right in the crown jewels with the big old four kilo ball. Has that happened to you, Stefan? Yes, it has, yes. <laughs> you don't and, um, How was that? I, I didn't say anything for about 10 minutes afterwards. I kind of just, uh, every time the every time the ball came back to me, I was like, no, no, someone else take this. So I'm just yeah, going to yeah, recover yeah. here on the sideline a in, bit. I'm in trouble here. Yeah. But it's, yeah. it's not just goal ball and cricket, though. Um, you've seized all opportunities and haven't let your disability get in the way. You're also, uh, you're studying at the moment in Sydney, correct, to become a lawyer? Uh, yeah, I'm studying law, yeah. Okay, so what year are you in? And, and is there a certain distinction within law that you're specifically going to go for? Um, so I'm in my third year at the moment, um, and I'm looking more at the criminal law, um, the criminal, criminal aspect. Yeah, so I'm just, I'm still just looking at my my opportunities at the moment. I think, uh, obviously, just enjoying enjoying the experience. Obviously, it's a stressful and hard, you know you have to work hard, but obviously yeah. as well, it's 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 an experience in itself. So just trying to you know to really work towards you, you know what you I mean, want to do in life. But with that, have you seen obviously not anything that can hold you back because of your disability? But has there been sort of 
adjustments because, you know, chatting to Natalie Wade from EQ Lawyers, someone I love to reference a lot. She's, um, she fights for disability rights in court and she's an incredible lawyer herself. Um, she's talked about how the system can be quite, quite archaic and law rooms themselves being such old establishments. Have you seen anything that you've had to make personal adjustments with because of your site? Yes, I think um, I think one of the biggest things I had to uh, really adjust is the way, um, obviously, you know, dealing with obviously in high school and everything as well is is dealing with the way I obviously how I speak to people about it as well, how to explain it. I think it's it's very hard to quantify and say how how much sight I have. So um, obviously, sometimes you have people who just don't understand and say, "Oh no, you're," you know, I've had pe- teachers and stuff tell me, or you know, even you know, lectures saying, oh, no, you're okay, you'll be able to do this. And I'm saying, you know, unfortunately, I can't. Can we provide a, an accessible alternative? Um, but also you deal with, obviously, the, uh, you know, some people who immediately assume that, you know, you can't see at all, you know, um, mm-hmm. and it's obviously a very wide distinction. So um, for me, I've learned how to really just how to, to broach the subject and, you know, in a respectful manner as well, uh, but also really, you know, try and... Um, defend myself as well because there's been a few times where I have actually been I would say thrown under the bus I'll use the the layman's terms being thrown under the bus by you know other people um by saying oh you you didn't explain it properly or something you know so it can be quite interesting yeah I think also I mean even if you were fully blind you could be a lawyer as well so we're not saying that but um you're right about the I think the two hardest things would be one non-accessibility in text and things like that especially like if you're looking up law precedents like if they're written like you're in trouble you know what i mean which is not fair for someone like you Stephen. but mm. two the lack of expectation of what people might think you'd be able to do like when you become a criminal lawyer there's going to be a negative stigma from clients going this guy's you know low vision there's no way he'll be able to do it mm. and it's cool to hear you say shit i mean de- sorry i can't swear uh definitely yeah i'll, I'll be able to do that which is awesome because yeah. that is pretty that's a pretty big perception change in my man which i love well i know um, a few um i actually know a few like i said i actually know a few fully blind lawyers so they're like i said they're, when Alistair you have McEwen, he's a good guy do you know they, Alistair? uh no i think i, I think uh, one of them's vaughn vaughn rolls um you know he's a he's a he's one of that guys in the blind group team actually he's a he's a he's a yeah. fully blind lawyer um and he obviously just talks to me about you know the accessibility options as well and but he's also said, and that's what I was trying to bring in the story before. He said you have to really say what, like you know, try and really accurately express what, what you can see, what you can't see, and what you need as well. Yeah. Because if you kind of beat around the like, I wouldn't say if you beat around the bush a little bit. He said he beat around the bush a few times, and unfortunately, as he said, there were documents provided that weren't accessible at all. They weren't in Braille. They weren't electronically, so you could use audio descriptive software as well. So it's important to, you know, and that's the lesson I learned is to, you know, and that's what I'll be continuing to develop is to really express in clear terms of what I can see and what I need as well to really push that point through. How old are you? 23, did you say? 23, yeah. I reckon, I'm calling it now, in 15 years, you will be the Disability Discrimination Commissioner for the Human Rights Commission. Ooh, Graham Innes, blind call. lawyer, he was it, Alistair McEwen. Um, I don't know, I like your vibe. There you go. Calling it now. Um, can we bet that better than on Sportsbet? Probably not. But, <laughs> Probably not. Uh, but I like it. Yeah. Um, um, what, what, sorry, mate. One more before we get to our bowl. You work at the NDIS, right? A lot of people that um, obviously listen to this are involved in NDIS. Love the NDIS, but it's got its challenges. Um, what is your message around the NDIS and what do you think the biggest change needs to be to make sure that it can probably be a bit more of a smoother process? Um, my, my advice, it's, it's, it's a complicated, it's a complicated thing, the NDIS, and I understand the, the anger and everything as well around it, you know, some anger, but also from an, from my perspective, I've seen it help so many people as well. So my, my biggest thing is to, um, to, to arm yourself with the knowledge as well, try and, you know, to look at, you know, to, to go online and to, to look at things as well and try and read up on stuff of how to best support you. Um, you know, talking with people in the NDIS helps as well. And, and people who actually work there as well because um, it really helps. It helps how to build your plan as well. Um, my biggest thing with the NDIS is I believe that planners at the agency who obviously who actually approve the funding, I think need to maybe look at. And I think I don't know if it's a, it should be like a you know they they be, they're made to do it as well. Maybe they should be attending more disability kind of community groups as well and like activities. Yeah, education as well because well said. I think that there is a sharp divide about what they what they you know what they think is 
the, you know what they're dealing you know the disability they're dealing with and the struggles from that and what's actually occurring as well because one thing as an LAC is and that's what I pride myself on as an LAC is trying to put as much description as possible because um, they're just reading words on a page these planners you know they're reading what we write to them whereas we're actually speaking to this person over the phone or via you know meeting them face to face so we understand what's going on whereas these people you know some of these people don't understand fully what the disability is supporting as well um so that's like my if, biggest thing it's like if i had to give out funding to guitarists i don't play the guitar it's like me rolling in there with no expertise going all right let's make this up you know what i mean it doesn't work does it mm -hmm. so i think yeah the lived education around lived experience is essential stefan thank you for saying that as well someone who works there because i think that holds a bit of weight mate we appreciate it Bowl of uncomfortable time, Stefan. You've been warned. We spoke uh, about uh, this yesterday. Yeah. Um, this one came through overnight, so it's fresh. Anonymous. Why do people with disability believe that their sport deserves the same recognition as traditional able-bodied versions of them? Spectators are less, quality isn't close, and yet I see people demanding more funding, sponsors, and everything else. That's a ripper. That's a ripper of a question. Hmm. Um, I think recognition is, is two part. I think recognition comes from exposure to the sport and getting the sport out there as well, because disability sports typically have, I think, a lot of more struggles getting out in the mainstream media as well and, and for people to understand it as well, and also funding as well. So you have that problem. You can't, for a lot of, if you don't have access to, you know, facilities or t support staff or anything as well, which comes from, you know, recognition and exposure, you can't take that next leap into developing the sport as well and making it obviously a bit of a pathway from grassroots to elite, elite status as well, I think. Um, it's it. I think, you know, it, it might be less quality, but also as well, recognizing it and, you know, building that sport up, you might see over time the quality improves. And I've seen that with, you know, with blind cricket with, you know, over time in Australia, um, you know, before... Before Cricket Australia came on board, you know, obviously the quality, you know, just in basic things where we'll, you know, the way we'll times were flying in, um, you know, in terms of hotels and everything, the support facilities we had access to. Now with Cricket Australia on board, we're having access to high quality, high, you know, high quality facilities. And now, improve, you know, and now we are, quality of our cricket is improving as well. And, and obviously now people go online, they see that as well. I like that's that. why I Love think it, it is. And don't, ever, you know, don't push yourself down with calling it not be, may not yeah, be better quality, mate. Stand by it. I, I, what are you talking about? Like, that's, uh, can I give an example? And it's not about me, but people don't know what they want until they see it, right? Mm. Like, wheelchair tennis wasn't, like, now people, because they realize that it's quality, right? And they realize it's different quality. It's different, but yeah. it's not less quality. Yeah. So I don't want to hear you say that ever again. Yeah, no, I think, um, well, what I mean about quality, so I'll, I'll, I'll explain that. So what I mean quality, obviously, like I said, quality is an, uh, a very interpretive, wide, wide, yeah. wide term, I think, yeah. you know. So yeah, like yeah. I said, it's, it's obviously in terms of, you know, in terms of what you're seeing, it, obviously you, you might not be seeing, this, like in terms of the cricket example, you're not seeing this guy nail a cover drive or, you know, which is a, you know, like a, a very good shot. But obviously it's, it's, there's a quality there and seeing that person actually yeah. trying the absolute best and being driven to do that as well. Hell yeah. Mate, I've seen David Warner get a get a pair before, get two ducks. That wasn't quality. Nah. But we do love David Warner. Big fan of the podcast. Love you, Warner. Um, <laughs> are you like the David Warner? He's like the David Warner of blind cricket. Yeah, better. Better? Nah. Yeah. But right-handed, though. Okay, well, then. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, would, I would say you're the other opener, but we don't have one in everybody. <laughs> here, so. You definitely make landing, though. She's a jet. All right, mate. Our uh, Australian blind cricket team will prepare for the 22 World Cup which is going to be in India in November. You pumped for that? Yeah, no, it should be a fantastic experience. Yeah, going away with the with the team as well. It should be They amazing. love cricket over oh. there. Did you see the... You're going to be the superstar, mate. That's when you get a real welcome, mate. They just love cricket. Did you I see the you know TV that. rights for the IPL in India? How much it costs? Yeah. No. They just sold it. Guess how much? No. 6.2 billion US dollars. Just they that's how many eyes get on it. cricket. Yeah. That is amazing. Well, I, I can't know. wait to see, and we'll be sharing the footage of you on our socials uh, and getting right around you. Um, Stefan, thank Good you so you, much Stephen. for coming on the podcast, mate. We really appreciate it. No, thank you. Thank you for having me on board. And yeah, so it's great to chat to, obviously, both of you as well. And um, yeah, and I thank you to everyone as well. It's supported, um, you know, disability sport and, you know, in in, you know, in all every sport as well, especially, you know, blind career through Career Australia and everything as well. I really appreciate it. You're a good egg, Nathan. mate. Good on you, brother. Thank you, mate. Thank you, mate.